So here's how I ended up with the 55 Chevy. When I was in high school, a buddy of mine named Clay Baber had a 56 Bel Air. And it was a four-door and it wasn't a gasser, but the body style left an impression on me. So that and seeing the movie Tulane Blacktop just made me obsessed with this body style and getting one of these cars in my garage at some point in my life. A year and a half. That's how long it's been since we ran up to Oregon in episode eight of Roadkill and took his bare 55 Chevy body, plopped it onto a Jim Meyer Racing gasser chassis and then came home and almost did nothing with it. And so now we're gonna force him to get it done. We gotta jam this thing together in 15 days in time for the Grand National Roadster Show. So she looks different from the last time you saw her because all of the rust is gone. That's a fiberglass front clip, which we bought to shave weight. Here is the Jim Meyer Racing Bitchin' Gasser chassis. So far, we've moved the firewall back to actually fit the Hemi in here, started a roll cage, but essentially, it needs everything. So the car over the last year and a half hasn't had a ton of work done to it, but it hasn't exactly sat around either. It's got all new floorboards, which we got from Classic Industries and had our friends at Hot Rods and Hobbies weld into the car. So we've got a solid foundation that we can now use to weld our roll cage into, which we got from Chris Dallison's Chassis Works. So the car is solid. It's basically a roller. The body is mostly intact. We've just got to do everything else to make it run. It's a ton of work but it's not impossible. I predict a lot of all-nighters and broken knuckles and stuff like that, but we may end up divorced from our wives on this deal, but I will finally get to drive my car, hopefully on my birthday. Yeah, I mean, when you're, when you're gonna build a car in 15 days, you need a list, because you're, you're never gonna remember anything, even with the list, but this at least keeps everyone on track. But the big thing is, is it reminds you, you need to order parts because we don't have anything we need to build this right now, and it's day one, and we need the overnight stuff, basically. Wow, you're good. The reasons that we dummied the engine in the car are one, we needed to measure up a drive shaft link so that we could get that coming, and then we had to put the steering column in the car, and the main reason for that is to see what our obstacles are for making headers. See, the problem here is this is the steering box, and this is where this needs to go, and I'm not even lined up with the port. It needs to come up. Even this side's a nightmare. It goes straight into the frame rail, but way more workable than your side. So our second major hurdle is figuring out how to build a set of headers for this thing, because nobody makes headers to put a Hemi in a 55. So we've got a bunch of bends from Hedman headers. We're gonna chop them up right now and see if our engine location is gonna work with our steering. So this is our test pipe right here. Give me the cold end. <laughs> if we make this work, then we can leave the engine where it's at and we don't have to hack up the rest of the car. Which will save us days. Yeah, I'm worried it's gonna hit in here if we do that. Go like this. I'll put a, a more of a right. this way on it. Yeah. All right. We've never made headers before, but so far it's proving easy. Last night I had an epiphany about how to get that one header tube around the steering column, and that sort of broke this project wide open because we were thinking we were gonna have to drop the steering box or raise the engine or do something to get headers on the car. So Finney and I stayed really late last night getting really excited about building sets of headers, and we're trying to make them perfectly symmetrical on both sides, so it's got that cool gasser evil look. See, the deal is when you cut the tube in a straight piece, it becomes perfectly round. If you cut it off square in the middle of a turn, then it becomes a big oval like this, and there's no way to put them together. So that makes this more of a challenge. So they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. It's kind of what we've been doing here today. <laughs> yeah, how many of those bends have we used? Look, there's your Headman Hemi into 55 Chevy header kit, and there's the mistakes. <laughs> those aren't mistakes, those are trim. Those are fine tuning adjustments. Dude. That's the reason we're here. That is a giant engine. I know, it looks even better with the headers, doesn't it? Oh my god. Wow. It just got real. Look at that. This side, not so impressive. This side, swing. Yes, big time. Oop, but yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that is cool. I need to sit behind the wheel. 
That is so evil looking. Pretty cool. That's way too high. Way too high, but I get to see. The next like <laughs> big moment will be firing it off. Yeah. Look at that. Firing right up. There you go. That's off. Three weeks of thrashing, lots of blisters on my hands from wiring and so I'm, well, blistered. But now, I'm gonna try to go around the block. You ready? The clutch is still engaged. <laughs> well, that was the worst best ride of my entire life. The brakes don't work, the clutch sticks, it rides horribly, and I don't care. Well, it made it around the block, so I figure we're good for 2,500 miles. Hit it. We won't even need an oil change. We might. Monday now. We hit the road last night figuring we were going to go about 500 miles and we made it like 150. So we got a crank. It sits too high in the front. We need to pull a leaf out of the front and crank up the coils in the back. I agree. But not now. Not now. Let's go. Buckle up with your new seat belts. <laughs> Sweet! Uh, I love this job. We woke up on day two in Barstow, California, and at this point we still had 2,450 miles to go and only five days to get there, which meant more miles per day. But this is roadkill, and we knew stuff was gonna slow us down, and the first thing was really stupid. We're cruising along the highway, and it started to like surge really quickly, and then it like backfired. I thought we were running out of gas, but it doesn't seem to be, so we're looking at the tune-up. This says everything's fine, but we have no gas gauge nor speedometer. You know, either one of those things would be useful right now because we don't know how far we've driven, nor do we know what gas is in the tank. We do know volts, oil, and temp, which is better than normal. So it's a We're Hit living it. large. Let's be, go. Be fine. Ready? Yep. That was probably me. That was you. <laughs> okay, so we are in fact out of gas. 113 miles, video guy says. How big is this tank? 16. Seven miles per gallon. You were uh, you were going allegedly <laughs> 95 to 100-ish at certain points of that. Yep. Up a mountain, so. Okay. Maybe the Hemi and the Chevy wasn't such a good <laughs> idea after all. <laughs> this is gonna be expensive. Oh boy. Let's just start running the 87. Here's a question, will five gallons get us 17 miles to Seligman, Arizona? Five times seven. Yeah, and if we're still getting seven miles to the gallon, that gets us there. Okay. I feel like an orange Challenger. I think all of the Challengers are orange. You ever notice that? Quite a few. Okay, you wanna drive? Sure. 17 miles to Seligman? I'll eat, get a food coma, and make you drive again? Yeah. After running out of gas, it looked like we were gonna be home free. The car was working surprisingly well for something that we had thrown together and driven around the block before we hit the road. But then, it started to bite us. Okay. This threaded little doohickey right here goes in the middle of the clutch rod to adjust the overall length of it. And it was out at the end of its adjustment and obviously backed off a little bit and came apart. See how the thread's gacked? Oh, it came out? It came out, right. Because it's missing a lock nut. So we need to uh, ungack that and then it'll thread right back together and it would be great if I could find a lock nut for it. Okay. I'm trying to carve out pieces of metal that are in my way from threading it back on. We didn't fully fix the clutch at the side of the road, so it was still hanging up by the time we hit Flagstaff, Arizona, but we met a fan there who worked at a Chevy dealership and was gonna hook us up. 
It appears Home Depot doesn't believe in having fine thread bolts, taps, or all thread. So we're gonna have to fix what we have. And Henry works at this Chevy dealership and was kind enough to bring us inside his house, let us borrow his tools. Which is like borrowing somebody's woman. This is kind of a big deal. All right, you can see the metal coming out of it as it cleans up the threads. Here we go, good as new. <laughs> There's never been a 55 Chevy with a Hemi in it in a uh, dealership in Arizona while fixing clutch linkage before. Never. Ever. First ever, setting records. This guy Henry was totally cool and the least we could do is just run him around the block in the 55. Kinda surreal, honestly. But why's that? It's just, it's surreal, I don't, I kinda like have to smack myself to realize I'm actually in the car with David Freiberger driving the blasphemy around the town I grew, I'm living in. The other thing that Henry pointed out to us was that one of the places where they had shot the Tulane Blacktop movie was just up the road, Mary's Cafe, where they shot that scene where the guys pick up the girl, and all of a sudden it dawned on us. Without even planning it, our whole road trip was following about the same route as the guys in the Tulane Blacktop movie. We had to pull over because there was so much smoke in the cabin, it was just brutal and it stemmed and it seemed like the regular roadkill exhaust leak, but we can't find that. But the transmission is just puking everywhere and we can't figure out why or where. No, let's just hit the road. By the end of the day, the 55 was running good and we were feeling good and we made it all the way into Gallup, New Mexico. This trip was amazing. First, we built a ludicrous car, a Hemi and a 55 Chevy Gasser. And then, after just driving it around the block once, we hit the road for 2,600 miles, and in the big picture, really didn't have that many problems. And we survived on rain, on slicks, and we hung out with a bunch of really cool people, but the capper was the fans that we met along the way. We had been letting them follow us on a live GPS map online, and everywhere we went, they came out to see us at gas stations and waving at the side of the road. And it was just awesome to meet people and hear their gearhead stories. And it really came to a head at this party at Power Tour, where we were just thronged with a bunch of people who watch Roadkill. And meeting the little kids who were inspired by it, the whole thing was truly humbling. We know that there's a lot of views on YouTube, but to just be able to talk to people and find out how the show affects their lives, man, it makes it all worthwhile. And in all, made this the best roadkill trip ever.